Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, I would be pleased to invite Ms. Anastasia Horn to the podium to sing our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd please place your hand over your heart and gentlemen, remove your hats. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner Great job. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the College of Agriculture's year 2001 commencement exercises. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of the college, I offer congratulations to our graduates and a special welcome to the families and friends who have joined us today. Many people have worked hard for you to reach commencement today. The faculty who passed the torch of enthusiasm for knowledge and the ability to perform as professionals in your discipline, the staff who see to the ongoing support for learning, and the many professionals who give their time and energy to make the college even stronger. Let us recognize them for a moment, if you would. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce the distinguished members of the platform party. I would ask that each of them stand as I read their names, but please hold your applause until they all have been introduced. Starting with the first row, Dr. Bob H. Suzuki, President of California State Polytechnic University, Pomona. Mr. Lee Harrington, our commencement speaker. Dr. Jane Olenberger, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. Rex Baker, Mace Bearer and Distinguished Alumnus. Gabriel Siapin, Class Valedictorian. Dr. Esteban Soriano, Vice President for University Advancement. Ms. Patricia Ferris, Vice President for Administrative Affairs. Dr. Michael Berman, Vice President for Instruction and Information Technology. Dr. Lorraine Turk, Acting Vice President of Student Affairs. Ms. Christy Graham, Ag Council, President for 2000-2001, Dr. Frank Gibbons, Academic Senator for Agriculture, Dr. John Try, Associate Dean, College of Agriculture, Dr. Anahid Cresilius, Chair, Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Science, Dr. Arthur Parker, Chair, Food Marketing and Agribusiness Management and Agricultural Education, Dr. Edward Fonda, Chair, Animal and Veterinary Sciences, Professor Udell Viss, Chair of Agricultural Engineering, Landscape Irrigation Science, and Apparel Merchandising and Management. Professor Dan Hostetler, Chair, Horticulture, Plant, and Soil Sciences. In addition, our special guests joining us today, seated in the front row, include Mrs. Mary Ann Baker, wife of our distinguished alumnus, Rex Baker. Thank you one and all for participating in today's graduation ceremony.
I would now like to call upon President Suzuki for his welcome and introductory remarks. President Suzuki. Thank you, Wayne. It's a pleasure for me to join Dean Bert Bridlack in welcoming all of you, our graduates, and your parents, families, and friends on this special occasion. My sincere congratulations to our graduates, as well as those who supported you in reaching this most significant milestone in your lives. Let me also wish all of you the very best as you leave this university. You have received a rigorous education here from our outstanding faculty who are deeply committed to excellence in teaching and learning, the primary mission of Cal Poly Pomona. We also have great academic support staff here who have assisted you in countless ways to have a successful academic and social experience. As a result, I'm confident you'll find yourself very well prepared whether you pursue a career in the workplace, or go on to professional or graduate school. If you don't realize it already, you should also know that Cal Poly Pomona enjoys an excellent reputation, not only in our immediate region, but increasingly throughout the state and the nation. In this year's U.S. News and World Report college rankings, Cal Poly Pomona tied for third place in the category of top Western regional public universities. The, na the university also ranked among the top 20 universities nationally in awarding baccalaureate degrees to minority students. Our growing reputation is due to the extraordinary achievements of our students, faculty, and alumni. Let me give you just a few examples. Cal Poly Pomona is the only campus in the California State University system to have a faculty member win the coveted Wong Family Excellence Award each year since its inception in 1999. The three faculty members selected for this prestigious $20,000 award, including Dr. Stephen Wickler, Professor of Animal and Veterinary Sciences, yes, they are all from disciplines across the university. These faculty are a reflection of the excellence of our faculty at Cal Poly Pomona. For the fourth straight year, the Cal Poly Pomona Model United Nations student team won major honors at the National Model United Nations Conference in New York City in an intense and highly co competitive simulation of the actual United Nations. The team earned the two top honors at this year's co conference competing against 2,500 students from 220 universities across the country. In March of this year, our women's basketball team, through stupendous and courageous efforts, won the NCAA Division II National Championship in Rochester, Minnesota. It was the fourth national championship for our women's basketball team, but no doubt one of the most memorable. Our student athletes are not only highly talented athletes, they are also excellent students, making our athletic program one of the best Division II programs in the country. Students from the two Cal Polys, Pomona and San Luis Obispo, won the Founders Trophy for its float entry in the 2001 Tournament of Roses in Pasadena this past New Year's Day. Over the past 52 years, our student designed and built floats have won over three dozen awards and have pioneered a number of innovations such as animation, which are now commonly used in many other floats. Many of our agricultural students and faculty have been involved in this project over the years. Dr. Marie Caudill and her research team are investigating the effect of a common mutation in a gene important in using folate and the effect of race and ethnic group on folate requirements. <laughs> Suboptimal folate status is associated with vascular disease, certain cancers, and developmental anomalies such as neural tube defects. Our alumni have also been highly successful. Nayaz Mohammed, a graduate of the College of Agriculture, 
runs the largest farm in the Imperial Valley and is a member of the University Educational Trust Board of Directors, the ma major fundraising support group for the university. Many other College of Agriculture graduates have gone on to achieve high executive positions in the ag industry or to start their own successful firms. Now, this is only a very abbreviated list of the achievements of our students, faculty, and alumni. I could go on and on, but I think it gives you an idea of why Cal Poly Pomona enjoys such a great reputation. The quality of education at Cal Poly Pomona is higher than many institutions costing several times more and is one of the best bargains and best values in higher education. And over the next five to 10 years, Cal Poly Pomona will become an even better institution. As you may have noticed driving around the campus, we have a lot of construction taking place now. In the next five years, we will have completed a total of over $500 million in new construction over a 10-year period. The new buildings that have been completed or going up, including the $4.5 million Agriscape project, are having a dramatic impact in changing the physical face of this campus and providing state-of-the-art facilities for our students. We are also becoming increasingly successful in attracting private and federal support for the university, and our endowment has quadrupled in the past five years. The Council for Aid to Education ranks Cal Poly Pomona sixth in the nation for corporate support and 11th in the nation for overall fundraising among all public institutions with master's degree programs. We have also been successful in attracting many outstanding new faculty who are bringing fresh knowledge, ideas, and vitality to the university, and together with our more experienced faculty are helping the university attain new heights of excellence. I believe these and other developments will enable Cal Poly Pomona to become one of the most distinguished teaching universities in the country. With such a strong history of achievements by our students, faculty, and alumni, I am confident that all of you who are graduating today are well prepared for your future careers and will, great, and will enjoy great success in the years ahead. I am sure you recognize the significant support you have received from our many outstanding faculty and staff. They, along with your families, have helped you succeed here. As alumni, we hope you will come back to Cal Poly Pomona to act as mentors to our students, serve on advisory groups, speak to student organizations, and give back to the university in many other ways in return for the support you have received while you were students here and help future generations of our students who follow in your footsteps to also succeed. We have been blessed with your presence at this university and we hope you will return home to this campus many times in the future. Good luck and my best wishes to all of you as you pursue your hopes and dreams in the years ahead. So congratulations again, thank you very much. Thank you, President Suzuki. Now I'd like to introduce the senior class representative from the College of Agriculture, as well as the past year's Ag Council president, Ms. Christy Graham, who will present the senior class gift to President Suzuki. President Suzuki, Dean Bidlack, members of the stage party, distinguished guests, and fellow members of class of 2001. It is a tradition of Cal Poly Pomona for the members of the graduating class to leave a gift of lasting value to the campus and make our campus a better place for future students. This year, it is my pleasure to continue that tradition. President Suzuki, I am pleased to present to you, on behalf of the class of 2001, our gift, the installation of new benches manufactured from sustainable materials to be placed on the east side of the CLA building to provide a safe, convenient, and more attractive place for students to gather. These benches will be part of the new landscaping initiative, which will dramatically enhance this area of the campus, and we are proud to be part of that project. Thank you. Thank you. 
Christy, thank you very much. This is a wonderful and much needed gift, which I'm sure will be greatly appreciated by future generations of our students here at Cal Poly Pomona. So class of 2001, on behalf of the entire university, thank you very, very much. The College of Agriculture is pleased to recognize its year 2000 distinguished alumnus, Rex O. Baker. Rex was presented this honor last fall at the Cal Poly Pomona Alumni Ceremony. Professor Baker received this Bachelor of Science degree in Agricultural Biology in 1962 and a Master of Science in Agriculture in 1983 from Cal Poly Pomona. Now a Professor Emeritus, after having taught in the Agricultural Biology program for 25 years, he is highly respected and in wide demand throughout the U.S. as a speaker and consultant to the agricultural, wildlife management, public health, and pest control fields, specializing in vector ecology, wildlife, public safety, and damage management issues. We consider him to be our friend and are proud to recognize him as our distinguished alumnus for the year 2000. The College of Agriculture is pleased to recognize its 2000-2001 Ag Council President, Ms. Christy Graham. Christy? There are several faculty and staff that we would like to recognize at this time. They are the lifeblood of the college and of the university. So we take this moment just to show a small amount of appreciation. The College of Agriculture Outstanding Teacher for the year 2000-2001 and recipient of the National Association of College and Teachers of Agriculture Teaching Award of Merit is Dr. Marie Caudell, <laughs> Professor in Nutrition and Consumer Sciences Department. An honorarium accompanies this award. College of Agriculture Outstanding Advisor for 2000-2001 is Dr. Cedric Matsushima. <laughs> of the Animal and Veterinary Sciences Department. We have many excellent advisors in our college and it is always a pleasure to acknowledge all that they do for our students through this award of recognition. An honorarium also accompanies this award. <laughs> to Dr. John Try, Associate Dean, on behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of the College of Agriculture, for all his outstanding service and extraordinary efforts on part of the college, I present you with this award of appreciation. I want to acknowledge that this honor was provided by all of the department chairs uh, with whom he works. Uh, it's also a surprise because we, we had two uh, copies of the uh, text that we're using here because he always checks it. And uh, until this very minute, he probably didn't know he was getting the award. <laughs> the College of Agriculture Outstanding Staff for the year 2000-2001 is Ms. Holly Green. <laughs> we are extremely proud of our staff and are very pleased that Holly was selected by her peers as the recipient of this honor. An honorarium also accompanies this award. Unfortunately, it looks like the award will be used to fix her car because her car broke down and she was unable to make it today. The college also honors students who have achieved excellence in the area of leadership. An honorarium and a plaque are awarded for these recognitions. The College of Agriculture Outstanding Student Leaders of the year 2000-2001 are Ms. Jody Woods from Animal and Veterinary Science and Kristen Truberg from Nutrition, 
from Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Sciences. A $500 honorarium goes to each student with this award. As part of our commencement ceremonies, the college invites the outstanding graduate to address his or her peers. This honor goes to the student with the highest grade point average upon graduation. This year's outstanding graduate is Gabriel Siapin, who majored in horticulture, plant, and soil sciences with an option in ornamental horticulture. Gabriel has earned a 3.88 overall GPA. He completed his degree requirements this spring quarter of 2001. Mr. Safin will now have the opportunity to share his thoughts with the graduating class. Gabriel. Thank you, Dr. Bidlack, for the opportunity to speak today. When I first heard about this award, I was very excited, and uh, Dr. Trier kindly reminded me that I also had to make a speech at graduation. My heart just about skipped a beat when I heard this, because if anybody knows me, they'll let me know that I'm not much of a talker. I really never have been. I think Dr. Ross described me pretty well when he said, I probably spoke about three words my first year here at Cal Poly. Well, I'm now about up to about 12 words, so I guess I could say Cal Poly has helped me out fourfold. This speech here today is for everybody who did not get to hear me talk enough during the past few years. My friends and family all know it's hard for me to get up to here today, so they'll be sure to poke some fun at me after. My wife is also recording this so everyone not here today will also be able to see my speech, and don't worry, copies will be for sale on the internet. <laughs> but seriously, I, I am honored to speak here today. I just wanted to talk about a few things I've learned here at Cal Poly. Everybody graduating here had his or, her, or her own reasons for choosing Cal Poly. May have been the facilities, the curriculum, the faculty. Whatever the reason, I truly believe that we thought this was a place for each of us to learn and succeed. I know that I'm leaving here having obtained a great education and valuable life experiences from which to build on. I also realize that while I may have learned a lot, there's still so much more to learn. With more education, we begin to realize how much there is to know and how little we actually do know. Dr. Gibbons explained this to me by drawing a simple picture. He first drew a small circle with a slightly larger circle around it. And this represented us as we came out of high school. The inner circle is our knowledge and the outer circle, the knowledge we thought was available to us. We did not know a lot, but we did not think there was that much to know, so basically we knew everything, but what high school graduate doesn't know everything? Dr. Gibbons then drew a bigger inner circle with an even bigger outer circle. We have learned a lot more, but we realize there's still so much more to learn. As we become more educated, our circle of knowledge increases, but the circle which represents the knowledge available to us becomes larger and larger. We're constantly struggling to keep learning to fill up this outer circle, which is virtually impossible. We have to realize that the learning process cannot stop here at Cal Poly. Many of us will not pursue secondary degrees, but we can still learn a lot from others in our field through seminars, trade shows, and from simply making our own mistakes. If there's a message in this speech, it is to strive to build our own inner circles and try to fill that outer circle. Cal Poly is only the foundation to our pursuit. We still have to build on what we have learned from here. Before I finish, I have to thank the faculty, administration, and my fellow students for helping me get to this point in my life. The faculty in particular has been tremendous here. I always felt that they had the students' best interests in mind, and I think that should be commended. I also have to thank my parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, relatives, for all their help and support. And last but certainly not least, I want to thank my wife, who has been there for me through the whole college experience. Congratulations to everyone graduating here today. This is a tremendous accomplishment. Everyone here should be proud of themselves. Once again, good luck to all the graduates, and I hope we cross paths again in the f future. Thank you. Good job, Gabriel.
At this time, I'm pleased to have the privilege of presenting the first Julian A. McPhee Honor Award of Student Excellence. Julian McPhee was the founding president of both Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and Cal Poly Pomona. He provided more than 35 years of dedicated service to the citizens of California. This special award was thoughtfully funded by an anonymous donor who was a colleague of Julian McPhee and honors a current graduating senior who exhibits excellence in his or her academic endeavors. The honoree from the College of Agriculture is Gabriel Siapin. Gabriel, if <laughs> you would come forward, I'd like to ask Dean Bidlack to uh, present you with both a medallion and, and a beautiful certificate uh, in recognition of your achievement. Congratulations, Gabriel. Congratulations, Gabriel. This is certainly a proud moment for all of us. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce to you our commencement speaker. Mr. Lee K. Harrington is the president and CEO of the Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation and the World Trade Center Los Angeles Long Beach. Mr. Harrington is responsible for the strategic direction and operational success of this countrywide private nonprofit economic development organization. Mr. Harrington provides leadership through partnering with the region's many economic development and business assistance providers. Mr. Harrington represents the region on Team California, a statewide economic development consortium, and CalEd, the state's economic development professional association. Mr. Harrington is a member of the Speaker's Commission on State and Local Finance, formed by Speaker Antonio Villagorosa of the California State Assembly to formulate recommendations to the legislature and broaden the constituency for fiscal reform in California. Prior to joining the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation, Mr. Harrington served as Senior Vice President of Operations and Support for the Southern California Gas Company, the nation's largest natural gas distributor. He was responsible for all pipeline, customer service, engineering research, and support functions. Mr. Harrington received his law degree from the University of Southern California and his undergraduate degree in political science from the University of California at Santa Barbara. It is indeed our pleasure to welcome Mr. Lee Harrington today to share some thoughts and challenges for our graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Lee Harrington. Thank you, Dean. I really appreciate that, and it's nice to be here again today with President Suzuki, who I have spent some time with in the past working on economic development out here in the San Gabriel Valley. I'm particularly pleased to be able to share with you today one of your early successes in life. There are going to be a lot more of them for you all along the way. As a fifth generation Californian and a third generation Angelino, though, I've got to say that even though my family's history in the past was in agriculture and in ranching, and I know the importance of agriculture in California, personally as an attorney and a former utility executive who now is embarked upon a, a third uh, a third career in my life, economic development, I have to admit I'm ag impaired. So my comments today aren't going to have much to do with what you've been studying for the last four years. In fact, I've been racking my brain over the last couple of weeks trying to figure out what the heck I could tell you that might add to what you've learned here in your last four years at Cal Poly. The other night I was saddling up uh, a wonderful horse that I have. Uh, he's an eight-year-old Arab gelding. His name is Sheik. This is kind of a new hobby for me. I've been a surf bum most of my life, and I guess I just finally got bored with surfing and wanted some other excitement, and Sheik has certainly brought it to me. Uh, actually, my grandfathers were both cowboys, I mean in the real sense of the word, so I must have it in the genes, but I just didn't recognize it earlier in life. Uh, I've been learning the hard way that horses are kind of uh, complex and intuitive animals. Uh, they really can tell where you're coming from. And Sheik is one of those striking Arab sorrels. He's got a white blaze on his face. He's got four white stockings. He carries himself magnificently. He knows he's smarter than I am, and he also loves people, so he's a big, friendly pal. Well, as I was 
saddling him up the other night, something started coming through my brain waves, and I couldn't figure out what was going on, and all of a sudden I realized that it was sheep. He explained to me that his grandfather's name was Ed. And although he didn't inherit Ed's ability to talk, he did become telepathic. And so he could tell that I was struggling with this situation of what I, what I could tell you. And he had a great idea for me. He said, um, life is wasted on the young. He says, why don't you share some of these uh, lessons you've learned out of life, mostly through your mistakes, he pointed out, uh, with the graduates in the hope that um, they might take a few of them away and throw a few of them away. Lord knows, Sheik knows my shortcomings. So I thought this was a great idea. And uh, I had a great ride that night on Sheik, gave him a few extra carrots, had my shot of tequila. I have one before I ride and one after I ride. Sheik likes it better that way. <laughs> and as I had that shot of tequila, I started jotting down some of my thoughts on what I'd learned out of life. And uh, I got 10 of them down with that second shot of tequila, and I thought things were going so well that I wrote another 10 of them with a third shot. Now, I'm happy to tell you this afternoon that it was so hot driving down here, I had opened my window, and those second 10 flew out the window. So we're going to make this short today. So let me give you my 10 life lessons. As I said, some of them may help. Some of them ought to be thrown away, I'm sure, because we're all individuals, and we've all got to go through life our own ways. But I think I'd start with, with uh, a phrase you've heard before, uh, be all that you can be. And let me just say right now, one of the things I've learned in life is other people have come up with some pretty damn good ideas and you don't have to recreate the world. So if, if there's a phrase or a concept out there that works, go with it. Don't work for weeks trying to come up with a new one. Well, what do I mean by be all that you can be? I'm talking about you. Who are you? I mean, be honest with yourself. At 21 or 22 or thereabouts, I certainly had a hard time figuring out who I was. What gets you excited? What are you good at? Sheik would tell you he's good at endurance, hills, distance, and show. As a poli-sci grad, I figured I had two choices, either teaching or law. I'm sure I had a lot more options than that. In fact, if I thought back, I actually received the Industrial Arts Award from Bank of America in high school. I didn't think much about that, but as I've gone through my career, I kind of wish now that I'd been a real estate developer. I love to design and build homes. But I didn't figure that out early enough in life. You don't have to come up with all this yourself. There are some tests that have been developed out there that are actually very good at helping you understand what your inherent strengths and weaknesses are. There are more than one, but I'll give you the name of one because I use it as I'm hiring executives who I want to work for me. And what I want to find out first and foremost is not what their formal education is or what their work experience is. I want to find out whether or not what really turns them on is what the job is all about. And if I find that's the case using this test, then I look at their experience and see what, what else they have to add. The test is called the uh, caliper exam. Anyone can take it. You'll get the results back. There is a fee involved, and it's not the only test that's around. But it's a good way to figure out what really makes you tick, and I think that's where you need to start. There's another phrase I'm sure you've heard, drink no wine before it's time. That's lesson number two. Life is so full of opportunity that you really need to be ready for the next steps that are important to you. It's the difference between, in horseback riding terms, a fall and a canter. Life has so many options, marriage, children, career calling. I wonder what's most important to each of you right now. Forget the old New Year's resolution. Instead, I'd suggest you ask yourself on New Year's Eve, or maybe on the eve of your graduation, what are the five most important things in my life right now? Write them down. That's your to-be list. When it comes to one of those five things, you need to be here now and you need to live it in the moment. Let's move on to number three, net present value. How many of you had economics while you were at Cal Poly? 
Net present value is a very important concept in economics. It really tells you how to become wealthy, but it can also work for you in terms of the wealth of life. Net present value is, is understanding about life and its rewards, but understanding that life is full of choices. Knowing who you are and what is most important to you at any point in time are the first two steps that we've talked about. Now, at this moment, which of these can deliver you the most satisfaction the quickest? That is a variation on the concept of net present value. Those are the ones that are most important to focus on. Now, I have to stop here because depending upon how you go about this exercise, you may find yourself confronted with conflicting value systems. You're going to have to work through that analysis both rationally and emotionally to decide what is most important now. Let me give you an ethical guide when you run into those sorts of, of problems where it doesn't feel quite right for you. There may be something that's a little too fast in terms of the uh, outcome. If you wouldn't want to read about it and you in the LA Times or your local newspaper wherever you live, it's probably not right for you. I found that to be a good ethical guide in my career. Lesson number four, no whiners. Your last idea didn't work out too well, huh? Well, I'm sorry about that. Just don't play the victim. We all hate victims. Would we have ever gotten to California, those whose family came by wagon train, if good old Ward Bond hadn't got up in the morning and said, wagons ho every day on the way to California? He may have had a lousy day the day before, but the next morning it was always wagons ho. Now there was another phrase I thought about using here. Uh, that was one that Clint Eastwood, or maybe his boss, used to use in Rawhide, which was head him up, move him out. But I figured they were heading for Abilene, which was a mistake in the first place. So life doesn't always work out the way we planned. That's very important to understand right up front. Lesson number five, trust your gut. As you learn more about yourself and as you learn more about life, trust your in instincts more and more, unless you're consistently wrong, of course. If you, have to stop, if, if you have to stop here again, if life is not working out the way you thought it might, and your lot in life seems to be to clean up the stables, then learn to smell the roses, because the alternative doesn't match up. And it's something we all need to do more often, maybe over a great bottle of wine, a cigar, or a very close relationship. Smell the roses and enjoy life as you go along. Number six is probably as important a lesson as I can offer you. It's one I had to learn over time. I was pretty serious early on in my career. Laugh at yourself, or others will. Don't get me wrong, what you stand for and what you may leave as a legacy is awfully important but let's get real. Let's get back to step one. What did that test tell you about your weaknesses? Well, whatever it told you, be, be ready to admit them. Deal with them, try and improve on them, but don't deny them. Others won't, at least behind your back. Now, Sheik is the most comfortable and trusting with me when I'm laughing, particularly at myself. We have this little game. I come down to see him, I've probably been gone a week, he kind of sees me come and he turns his back, pretends like he's mad that I've been away so long. Finally, he turns around and comes over and I start patting him and touching him and stroking him and slapping him. And finally, he nuzzles up, up and he slowly puts his head against my side. And he moves his head down to my pants and finally down to my pants cuff. And very slowly with his, with his lips, not with his teeth, he pulls my pants leg in and then does grab the pants leg with his teeth. And then he lifts it up and just about tips me over. And I've learned to laugh at that. And you know what? When I laugh, he laughs too. And I think it's true of people. If we laugh at ourselves a little bit, they'll laugh with us a lot. Yeah. You've learned that one already. Good. Oh, I hate this hat. Number seven, trust is everything. Betty Davis once said, don't trust men who drink white wine. Why she said it, I'll never know but it seemed to work for her based on her life experience and on her gut. If you care for someone, make his or her trust your number one priority. I'm a good contracts lawyer. I can protect myself, 
but today I'm not comfortable doing a deal with someone that I just don't inherently trust. Even if it looks like a very lucrative deal, I'll pass it by because trust is everything. Again, I have to stop here and offer one thought, though, that I learned as a contract lawyer. If you're going to do a deal with someone you're not too sure of, make sure you include a buy-sale agreement or clause in the agreement so that if it doesn't work out, one of the two of you can buy the other one out. It's a much friendlier way to part, and it makes everyone think real hard about the outcome. This is number eight. Changing a horse in midstream is better than waiting for the creek to rise. Now, if that sounded like a mixed metaphor, I've been going around with them all my life. I don't know why, but one of my colleagues in the energy business who uh, retired before I did collected sayings from all the people that he worked with over the years at the gas company. And the one that he left me with was, let's let the ball bounce and see how it rolls. Remember, laugh at yourself or others will. Careers are very important to your self-satisfaction and your self-worth, but things do change. We change. Maybe we didn't quite figure out step one or step two, or maybe we've been all that we can be in our current careers. There's nothing wrong with that, and I can't tell you how satisfying it is to finish one career and start on another one. That list of the five most important things in your life is going to change. I bet almost every year something in that five changes for you. If your horse starts to twitch, if he doesn't respond the way that he should, get in touch. Well, that, that's last. <laughs> get in touch with him. Get in touch with yourself. It may be time to get off the cattle trail you're on. Your horse is telling you something. I'm going to take this off. Thank you. <laughs> your horse is telling you something, folks. Low branches can be wake-up calls. Start over one step at a time. Balance beats grip and spurs every time. Don't be afraid to think about a second career. Lesson number nine, we're getting to the end. Cheap boots suck. <laughs> Life is all about quality in your relationships, in your ethics, and in your legacy. And what's important about your legacy is how you and those who are very close to you feel about it. And if part of your legacy is wealth, share it as early as you can. My heroes are those who've devo uh, devoted the second half of their lives to the community because they've been able to create wealth. And you know what? While they're doing that with the community, they usually become more wealthy still, more successful than ever. Well, life's got its ups and downs, as, as I said, but it can be a great ride. So my 10th lesson is, ride them cowboy, or cowgirl, as the case may be. Now, let, let me say something about this. It reminds me, one of my lessons in business is, if you want to get something done, hire a woman. And one of my last uh, lessons, which Sheik reminded me of, because this works in relationships, but it certainly works with Sheik as, uh, Sheik as well, is that the best rides usually follow a few sweet carrots, some fond petting, and a warm up in the ring. <laughs> I want to leave with you a question that even Sheik couldn't answer for me, and since I know a lot of you are into the science of agriculture, would you please tell me anatomically why men don't ride side saddle? <laughs> In closing, take life seriously, take yourself seriously, but make sure to watch out for the manure, especially when you're wearing your best boots and you're not in a laughing mood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. I'm certain the class of 2001 heard your words and accepts the challenges to achieve those leadership responsibilities and watching out for that manure. I would now call upon uh, Vice President Jane Oldenberger to present the candidates for the Master of Science degrees. Thank you, Dean Bidlack. Will all the candidates for the Master of Science degree please rise? President Suzuki, I present to you the candidates for the Master of Science in Agriculture with options in Agricultural Science, Animal Science, Nutrition and Food Science, and Plant Science. 
These candidates have completed the requirements for the Master of Science degree as prescribed by the State of California and the trustees of the California State University, and they have been recommended by the faculty of California State Polytechnic University, Pomona. Candidates for the master's degree, you have heard the recommendation of the faculty of California State Polytechnic University, Pomona. By the authority vested in me as president, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Agriculture with option in Agricultural Science, Animal Science, Nutrition and Food Science, and Plant Science with all the rights, honors, and opportunities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. supposed to read something. It looks like everybody's already done, but that's all right. Um, I'll read it. Each master's degree candidate should come forward as directed by the marshals. I believe they're already there. Hand your name card to the readers, receive your hood from your major professor and your certificate from myself, and then recess down the center ramp to be congratulated by President Suzuki before returning to your seats. Thank you. From the Department of Food Marketing and Agribusiness Management, Ag Education, receiving the Master of Science degree in Agriculture with an option in Agricultural Science, Thomas Allen Bean. <laughs> Completed requirements by comprehensive examination. Assisting in the hooding is Professor Art Parker, Department Chair. Barbara Bromley Hall. Completed degree requirements by comprehensive examination. Major Professor, Professor Flint Freeman. Amber Helen Danielle Cummings. Completed degree requirements by comprehensive examination. Major Professor, Professor Flint Freeman. Tricia Diane Raymer. Completed degree requirements by comprehensive examination. Major Professor, Professor Flint Freeman. Shauna Daniels. Completed degree requirements by comprehensive examination. Major Professor, Dr. Peggy McLaughlin. From the Department of Food Marketing and Agribusiness Management, Ag Education, receiving the Master of Science degree in Agriculture with an option in Food Marketing. Geta Cho Tomrat. Thesis title, A Study of the Effects of NAFTA on the U.S. Economy with Emphasis on California's Agricultural Trade. Major Professor, Dr. Edison Kabakungan. From the, from the Department of Animal and Veterinary Science, receiving the Master of Science degree in Agriculture with an option in Animal Science, Kristen Leanne de la Paz. <laughs> Thesis title, Does Muscle Function Explain Preferred Speed in Trotting Horses? Major Professor, Dr. Wickler. From the Department of Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Sciences, receiving the Master of Science degree in Agriculture, with an option in food science. Satara Tarabian. Thesis title, Two Common Mutations, C677T and A1298C in the human methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase gene and their associations with plasma total homocysteine and blood folate concentrations. Major Professor, Dr. Marie Caudill. <laughs> 
Winnie B. Thesis title, Physical and Sensory Characteristics of a Cranberry Juice Beverage Fortified with Soy Protein Isofolate. Major Professor, Dr. Nanita Kabakungan. From the Department of Horticulture, Plant and Soil Science, receiving the Master of Science degree in Agriculture with an option in Plant Science. Dina Carr. Thesis title, Visitor Behavior Study of the Camellia Forest at Descanso Gardens. Major Professor, Dr. Peggy McLaughlin. Andrew Jerome Shy. Thesis title, Yield Study of Four Cultivars of Grain Sorghum. Major Professor, Peggy McLaughlin. Now, will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture please rise? <laughs> President Suzuki, I present to you the candidates for the baccalaureate degree from the College of Agriculture. These candidates have completed the requirements for their respective degrees as described by the State of California and the trustees of the State U California State University. They have then recommended by the faculty of the California State Polytechnic University, Pomona. Are you ready? <laughs> Candidates for the baccalaureate degree, you have heard the recommendation of the faculty of California State Polytechnic University, Pomona. By the authority vested in me as president, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture with all the rights, honors, and opportunities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> we have one more thing to do. In academic tradition, the student who has not yet earned a degree wears a tassel on the mortarboard on the right side. When the degree is conferred, the scholar moves the tassel to the left and joins a select company. In recognition of your new status, will all recipients of the baccalaureate degree move the tassel to the left? Congratulations. the class of 2001, I commend you for your effort and your accomplishments. Will the marshals now lead the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree to the stage for presentation of individual graduates. From the Department of Agricultural Engineering, Landscape Irrigation Science, and Apparel Merchandising and Management. Joining in the presentation is Professor Udell Viss, Chair of the Department, and Professor Betty Tracy, Program Director for Apparel Merchandising and Management. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree in Apparel Merchandising and Management. Sheila Lynn Crace. Eileen Ling Wong. Victoria Patricia Marie Cavesi. Ariana Lynn Birdwell. Veronica Rosas. Michelle Lynn Roman. Angel Cheryl Deans.
Fatu Ao Jai. Chao Bui. Susan Trong. Maria Teresa Costales Mabini. Tricia Bersamin Del Rosario. Janelle Punzalan Corpus. Jennifer Joan Olawson. Jung Su Lee. Lena Ching Yen Tang. Lori Ann Blank. Katrina T. Hewitt. Christine Michelle Holloway. Natalie Boreco. From the Department of Animal and Veterinary Sciences. Joining in the presentation is Dr. Ed Fonda, Chair of the Department. Karen Jennifer Thames. Dawn Anne LeBlanc. Erin Christine Bagley. Ryan Stephen Rose. And Marie Elizabeth Southern. Jody Woods, magna cum laude. Rosalie R. Genitakis, cum laude. Amber Paula Hawkins. Christopher Philip Surdock. Abby Elfia Ferris. Joseph Francis Fictars, magna cum laude. Mary Ann Bibb. Teresa Ann Kadina. Rebecca Sue Amio. Orlando Alamillo. Tony Sue Wilson, cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Simmons. Christy Sue Miley. Shelley Marie Moore. Chad Anthony Godoy. Suzanne, Suzanne Elaine Beyer. Heather Suzanne Elliott. Yanina Mickelson. Laura Diane Barnes. Amy Ann Eggleston McNair Scholar. Miriam Elemzada. Elemzada. Pernilla Elsa, Elsa Sophia Edstrom, cum laude. Kathleen Ann Johnson. Christy Leilani Lee. Brenda Aguilar. Moisha Mike Gutman. Audria Marie Herrera. Raymond Locke. Sandy Lee. 
Christina Naomi Elala, magna cum laude. Matthew James Eronian. Martha Rosetta Adeinka Hunter. Luis Soriano. Sybil Ibet Polanco. Aaron Valerie Smith. Abigail Barbara Carrillo. Raul Avila. Juan Manuel Rodriguez. Libra Ann Reich. Jonathan Charles Cortez. Candace Jeanette Pointer. Jennifer Susan Huber. Jenna Lee Bailey. Sylvia Hope Salopsky. Jennifer R. Snyder. Janice Stegner. Desiree Marie Lopez. Michelle Evans. Susan Lynn Reed. Jody Carey Steinke. April Marie Tanque. Michelle Lynn Russell. Carolyn Guajardo. Lisa Adriana Ortiz. David Martin Hilliard. Shannon Marie Lucas. Scott Michael Jarrell. From the Department of Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Sciences. Joining in the presentation is Dr. Anahid Cresselius, Chair of the Department, Major Foods and Nutrition, Jennifer Susan Greer, Jacqueline Michelle Lane, Jennifer Isabel Crawford, Tunda Krotko, Gina Renee DeGeorge, Kristen Diane Truberg, Sister Mary Claire Mancini, Nicolette Suzanne Sevra, Amy Ronnie Bennett, Carrie Jean Hardwick, Eileen Kariga Master, Michelle Catalina Burroughs, Tracy Nguyen, Irene Hartono, Susie E. Patty Chieko Takamoto. Caroline Huang. Tai Yi Yang.
from the Department of Food Marketing and Agribusiness Management and Agricultural Education. Joining in the presentation is Dr. Art Parker, Chair of the Department. Christopher Avila. Nikhil Ganakar. Jorgelina Enos Decaroli. John William Lewis. Shelley Ann Walker. Sherry L. Fritchie. Bart William Van Dyke. Brian Allen Denton. Christy Lee Graham. Sarah Kathleen Cox. Meredith Ann Alford. Christopher Joseph Lafave. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree in Agricultural Science, Lene M. Green. Jamie Bebout. Kara Jean Cruzon. Daniel Ray Tabor. From the Department of Horticulture, Plant and Soil Science. Joining the presentation is Professor Dan Hostetler, Chair of the Department. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree in Agronomy, Eddie Von Newman. Jana Leanne Windham. Andres Roberto Rivas. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Biology, Jeffrey C. Diep. Christy Diggins Ritchie. Benjamin Young O. Efren Velasco. Gabriel Michael Gomez. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Option in Fruit Industries, Simeon Anthony Flores. John Manuel Inigas, Jr. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree in Horticulture, Option Ornamental Horticulture, Tan Pham. Brian Andrew Bado. Seth Andrew Young, cum laude. Dennis Allen Kramer, Jr. Richard Allen Gilbert. Gabriel R. Mendoza. Roberto Luna. Jeffrey Scott Miller. Brian Koyo Takamoto. Ryan N. Sumida. Catherine Lorraine Raquette Garrett. Renee Castillo. David Yanez. Gabriel Daniel Sayapan. Summa cum laude. This concludes the presentation of the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree.
Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the class of 2001. I welcome the graduates. I welcome you, the graduates, into the academic community. I also wish to welcome you as our newest alumni. I invite you to, of course, join the Cal Poly Alumni Association. It will allow you to maintain your ties to the university, as President Suzuki mentioned. Let's give our new graduates another ovation. Congratulations to one and all. debt of gratitude to the parents, husbands, wives, significant others, family members who have encouraged, in many cases sacrificed, to make it possible for these graduates to come to the university. We salute all of them and ask them to stand for a well-deserved round of applause as well. That's you, parents. College of Agriculture, the faculty, staff, and alumni extend their admiration and respect for a job well done. This ceremony ends those years of hard work, long hours, sacrifice, and dedication that were required to reach today's achievement, your graduation. You'll look back many times to relive this moment, but the time it took for you to reach your goal will become less important. You will find your experience, training, and education was truly important. You are ready and you will succeed. There are, there are several other individuals that I would like to recognize quickly. Sharon Roth, administrative support who contributed to today's event. Dr. Melinda Burrell and Dr. Peggy McLaughlin are readers. And Janet Mundy, who provided the administrative services to bring us together and who made the necessary arrangements. I would also like to acknowledge Professor Baker, our outstanding mace bearer and distinguished alumnus for 2000. I appreciate the presence of all our vice presidents who graciously participated in our ceremony. You have obviously enhanced the quality of the program and our students' memories. I especially want to thank the president for his kind words and leadership. Last but not least, I want to thank Mr. Lee Harrington for his enlightening and challenging message today. Following the recessional, we invite the graduates and their guests to join us in the reception to be held on the lawn of south of Building 8, right behind us. If the audience will please remain seated during the recessional. At the conclusion of the faculty recessional, our 2001 commencement will be formally concluded. Thank you all for sharing this special day with us, and congratulations again to one and all.